my, look, something's falling. Roger, you don't think it's going to the house, do you? The odds of being hit by an object that size are roughly 10 million to one. 10 million to one or not, it's going to land right here and it's not falling. I'm sure it's a meteor. Shouldn't we go down to the cellar? If it's not a meteor, it's an optical illusion, mass hysteria. Daddy, it's a real spaceship, I'm sure it is. Or maybe a weather balloon. Yes, that's what it is. General Powers only said yesterday. It's landing. Right in my rose garden. I'm going to call the police, the army. Oh, look how it shines. Here it comes. Right in my rose garden. Maybe it's a balloon. No, it's a spaceship. And right in our own backyard. But what makes it shine so? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Oh, John, darling, don't. John, please come back. Roger, it's Vandy right in my rose garden. I got General Powers on the phone. He's coming right over. Said they've been watching that thing all day and they don't know what it is. You mean it's nothing of ours? They believe it's from outer space. And John's down there, Daddy, get a gun or something. Perhaps we'd better leave the house until the army arrives. We can't leave, John. Why well, can? It's no bigger than a car. It must be a meteor. Meteors are blazing hot. Well, this is a cold one. It's opening. The whole side's opening. John, come back quick. Well, there's a man getting out of it. Oh, I feel much better already. I'm sure if you ask can read that thing for us, he will. Roger, you ask him. If it's really a man. Hey, John's shaking hands with him. John, darling, come up here quick. And bring your friend. There's something wrong with the way that creature looks. If it's a man and not a monster. Well, he looks perfectly nice to me. I seem to have made a mistake. I am sorry. I better go back and start over again. My dear sir, you've only just drive. Come in, come in, mister, mister. Creighton. Ask him about moving that thing off my rose bed. You must be tired after your trip. Yes, I am a little. Oh, it's better than I hoped. Better? What's better? The house. Or is this an apartment? No, this is a house in Maryland, USA. In the 20th century. To think this is really the 20th century. And now I'm a little tired, if you don't mind. Good morning. I brought you your breakfast. How thoughtful. Delicious. But I'm afraid my stomach is not like yours. If you'll pardon me, this is all I need for the day. You know, you've really upset everyone. I suppose that I would. Can you really take over the world just like that? Oh, yeah. Well, what do you plan to do when you have taken over? Ah, that's my secret. Well, I think you'd be a very nice president. That's it, they've let you, of course. What a sweet girl you are. Marry him right away. Marry John? Yes, I see it in your head and in his. He wants you very much. Well, we plan to get married this summer. That's if Daddy doesn't fuss too much. Do it before then. I'll arrange it if you want me to. How? I can give it to your father. That sounds awfully ominous. I think you better leave poor Daddy alone. Oh, I love it so. You know, when I woke up this morning, I had to pinch myself to prove I was really here. We were all doing a bit of pinching ever since Don Roof had nothing but visitors and phone calls and troops outside in the garden. No one has the faintest idea what to do about you. You still haven't asked Mr. Creighton about moving that thing, have you? There are too many important things to ask him. I hate to be a nag, but you know the trouble I've had getting things to grow in that part of the garden. Good morning. Any sign of your guest? Helen took his breakfast up to him a few minutes ago. They don't seem to be having much luck, do they? I sure hope I haven't inconvenienced you by me staying here like this. Well, we love having you. I just hope your family isn't too anxious. One of the GIs finally called them and said I was staying here for the weekend. The rest of your lives is something isn't done. How long do you think that'll be, Dad? Who knows? Ah, how wonderful to see you all again. Oh, your mind, so many crude thoughts blazing away. Yes, Mrs. Spelling, I'll move my ship off your roses. This... Oh, that's awfully sweet of you. And Mr. Spelling, if any interviews should be granted, you'll be the first, I promise you. That's very considerate, I'm sure. So you can stop thinking those particular thoughts. And so we feel, the government of the United States feels, this problem is too big for any one country. So we're turning the whole affair over to Mr. Paul Lawrence, Secretary General of the World Council. Very sensible. I should have thought of that myself. Mr. Lauren is always way here now, and my am, Mr. Creighton. You made me look singularly ridiculous. I'm awfully sorry. No, you can't kill me. You were reading my mind again. 
I really can't help it. It's such black thoughts today, but intense, very intense. I regard you as a menace. I know you do, and I find it awfully... Mr. Creighton? At your service, Mr. Lawrence. I welcome you to this planet in the name of the World Council. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Could you leave us for a long moment, General? Y yes, sir. Shall we sit down? Yes, yes, I'm sitting down. I'm not, my manners are not quite suitable yet. Now, Mr. Creighton, in violation of the rules of diplomacy, may I come to the point? You may. Why are you here? Curiosity. Pleasure. You mean you're here as a tourist in this time and place? Yes. Very, very well put. We have been informed that you have extraordinary powers. By your standards, yes, they must seem extraordinary. We have also been informed that you plan to take over the world. Yes. What a remarkable mind you have. I have to practice. I've attended so many conferences. May I say that your conquest of our world puts your status of tourists in a rather curious light. Oh, I said nothing about conquest. Then how else do you intend to govern? The people won't allow you to direct their lives well without struggle. But I'm sure they will if I ask them to. You believe you can do all this well without violence? Sure I can. One or two demonstrations and I'm sure they'll do as I ask. Now what have you done? But look out the window, Your Excellency. Nice, isn't it? I confess, I worked out a few melodramatic tricks last night. By the way, all the soldiers in the world, rifles, right now are floating through the air. You see, sir, I didn't exaggerate my report. Now they have them back. Oh, no, you certainly didn't. You were a skeptical, weren't you? Naturally, but I, now, I, now I think it's possible. That this, this gentleman is going to run the everything? Yes, yes, I do. It might be wonderful. No more countries and no more wars. What? Oh, I like a lot of countries and a lot of wars. But at this stage of development, you're supposed to have a lot of countries and a lot of wars. Innumerable wars. But you can help us change all that. Change all that? My, my dear sir, I am your friend. What do you mean? Why, well, your deepest pleasure is violent. How can you deny that? There's the whole point to you, the whole point to my hobby. You are my hobby, all mine. But our lives are devoted to controlling violence and not creating it. Now don't take me for an utter fool. After all, I can see in your minds. My dear fellow, don't you know what you are? What are we? You, you are savages. I have returned to the dark ages of an insignificant planet simply because I want the glorious excitement of being among you and revealing your true savagery. There is murder in your heart, and I love it. It intoxicates me. You hardly flatter us. I didn't mean to be rude, but you did ask me why I'm here, and I have told you. You have no wish then to help us poor savages? I couldn't even if I wanted to. You won't be civilized for at least 2,000 years, and you won't reach the level of my people for about a million years. I mean to regulate your pastimes. Don't worry, I won't upset things too much. I've decided I don't want to be known to the people. You will go right on with your countries, your squabbles, the way you always have. Well, I secretly regulate things through you, and, I'll, and I will stay in this house until you have laid the groundwork for my first project. And what is that to be? A war. I want one of the really splendid wars with all the trimmings, all the noise, all the fire. A war? You're joking. You've got to be kidding. We're trying as hard as we can not to have a war. But secretly you want one. After all, it's the one thing your little race does well. I think I, you hardly want me to deprive you of that little pressure, now, would you? I think you must be mad. Not, not mad, simply philanthropist. Of course, I myself will get a great deal of pleasure out of the world. The vibrations must be incredible, but I'm doing it mostly for you. So if you don't mind, I want you to get a few instruments ranged spontaneously so we can get started spontaneously. Uh, uh, I refuse. In that event, I should select someone else to head the World Council, someone who will start a war. I suppose a few people like... like I like the idea. How can you do such a horrible thing? Don't you know we don't want to be poor savages? But you have no choice. Anyway, you're just pulling my leg. I'm sure you want one just as much as the rest of them do. Now, that's what you're going to get. The biggest war you ever had. Heaven help us. Heaven won't. Oh, I can hardly wait. Why? Why? It's another one, and it's going to land. I'm sure you're mistaken. No one would dream of coming here. It's landing. Well, it's a friend of yours, Mr. Creighton. No, no, not a friend. Here he comes. Now we have two of them. Right in my roses. Please leave us alone. Who on earth was that? It's another one, another visitor. 
Now we're done for. I'm going in there. Ellen, don't you dear. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to. No, alone. I know exactly what I want to say. I want you both to listen to me. You don't need to speak. I know what you'll say. That you have no right here, that you mustn't. I agree. Creighton has no right here. He is well aware that it's forbidden to interfere with the past. The past? You are the past, the Dark Ages. We are from the future. In fact, we are your descendants on another planet. We visit you from time to time, but we never interfere because it would change us if we did. Fortunately, I have arrived in time. Why did you want to hurt us? Oh, I didn't. I just wanted to have, well, to have a little fun, to indulge in my hobby. Against the rules, of course. Creighton is a rarity among us. Mentally and morally, he is retarded. He regards your period as his toy. A child? Now, really. He escaped from his nursery and came back in time to you. And everything went wrong. Everything. I wanted to visit 1860. That's my real period, but then something happened to the con and ended up here. Not that I don't find you nearly as interesting, but... We must go, Creighton. Don't... Well, you did like me just a little bit, didn't you? Yes, I did. Time has begun to turn back. Time is bending. Don't be sad, my girl. I shall be back one bright day, but one bright day in 1860. I dote on the Civil War. Creighton? Only next time, I think it'll be more fun if the South wins. There is nothing wrong with marrying a wealthy man. The horror of it has always eluded me. However, my only wish is that you marry someone hardworking, ambitious, a man that will make his mark in the world, not a boy who is content to sit on a farm all his life growing peanuts. English walnuts, Daddy, and he won't just sit there. Will you stop contradicting me? But Daddy, John grows walnuts. Hello, everybody. What kept you so long, darling? You missed Daddy's broadcast. I saw it before I left home. Wonderful broadcast, sir. Thank you, John. Um, the meteor you were talking about, well, for a while, it looked like a spaceship. Spa spaceship? Nonsense. Remarkable what some people will believe, want to believe. Besides, as I said in the broadcast, if there's any traveling to be done in space, we'll do it first. The preceding was brought to you by Mrs. Sauter. It was filmed, directed, and revised by Larry Harmon and Richard Nunlist. The cast was Creighton, played by Larry Harmon, Mr. Spelding, played by David Muther, Mrs. Spelding, played by Joanne Mann, Ellen, played by Beth DeLop, John, played by Stephen Carberry, General Powers, played by Tom Hotarik, Paul Laurent, played by Jack Alexander, and the second visitor was played by Mark Labor. The end.